continuing with our message series, House of Cards, and today's message is entitled, Love and Respect. As we begin, I, I just want to share a little story with you about way back to when I was in the seminary. And one of the things, after we had gone through college and then we're at the seminary, we always were looking for jobs to try to help pay for school. And when you graduate college, it was nice because you had a degree. The problem is, is that not a lot of businesses were looking for people who knew Greek and Hebrew. Uh, so there weren't a lot of uh, jobs available in our area uh, that, that used our degree. And so different guys took on different hobbies and, and different, some had different skills trying to find a good job. And my roommate was one of a group of guys in my class who ended up getting a job with a carpenter who installed hardwood floors. And it started out, he paid them about $10 an hour, which back 20-some years ago especially was a nice part-time job. But as they continued to do it, they got good at it. And he finally broke them off into their own crews, and his business grew, uh, and, and what he paid them grew as well, and they started making some decent money. And I remember when my roommate would come back from work after he had worked for his boss for a while, he now had his own crew, and every night it seemed like it was the same thing, that he would be talking to his boss about the job they were on, and he would say things like, I can't believe you're not done with that job yet. Are you kidding me? I how far done are you? And he would tell them how far they were, and he'd be saying, you know, we're halfway done with the job, we're three quarters of the way done with the job. And he would tell them, you guys have got to get moving. Uh, we are on a schedule, there's a bunch of jobs I've scheduled, you were supposed to be somewhere else. Uh, by the end of this week, you need to get going. And my roommate would, would get off the phone and he would be upset and he would you know, talk to us and say, you know what, I can't work any faster, I can't work any harder, and you know what, I'm getting sick of always being yelled at every day after work. And, and finally, this went on for a few months and my roommate told me, I'm quitting. I'm quitting this, I don't care how well I'm getting paid right now, it's not worth all the abuse I take and all the hassle, um, I'm done. So that day when his boss called, he said, just so you know, I'm putting in my two weeks and I'm, I'm not going to do this anymore. It's just not worth it. And so the, the boss uh, said, you know what, would you be willing to meet with me? You know, I, I'm very happy with the work that you guys do. Um, I know I'm on your case a lot, but can we, can we just talk about this a little bit? And they said, sure. So they got together and had, had a discussion. That night, my roommate came home and I asked him, well, how did it go? And he said, well, actually, it was a very productive meeting. I'm not going to quit. And what the boss talked to me about was he said, you know what? You need to work smarter, not harder. And, and what he realized is that when he had gone from being the carpenter's assistant to leading a crew, his mindset didn't change. And so what happened is as they were working, if they were missing something in the truck, he would run and get it. The problem is, is when he would run and get it, the rest of the crew wouldn't work. They would have to wait for him to come back. If there was something that they needed from the hardware store that they had forgotten, he would jump in the truck and run and get it. And the boss told him, that's why we're paying this kid $7 an hour to run uh, tools for you, to go, it's his job to do that. Your job is to make sure everyone else is working the entire time, and when that happens, you'll get more work done. And sure enough, a couple weeks later, things started going the way they were supposed to go, simply because he started working smarter, not harder. Now, the reason why I bring this up as we're going through our house of cards, and specific when, specifically as we look at our theme, love and respect, is that as I do marriage counseling, I know it's the same for Jeff as well, that we talk to individuals who are tired. And they talk to us, and it's like talking to my roommate from college. You know what? I'm doing as much as I can. I'm putting in 100% effort, and my spouse talks to me like I'm not even trying, like I'm doing nothing. 
when the reality of it is, is when they say they want more and more and more, I have nothing more to give. And for that reason, I'm at a point in my life, and, and definitely with them, where I want to quit, that I, I can't continue doing this. I can't continue working this hard and getting beat up on a regular basis. Today, as we, we go into God's word, please understand with this message that I'm not telling you that you need to work harder. This isn't about digging deeper and finding more energy to do things uh, to, to make this happen. But as we look specifically at our theme with love and respect, my encouragement to you is to consider ways as you look into your life that, that maybe some of, of what's going on, you actually need to do less. This isn't about saying or doing more. Sometimes it's about keeping your mouth shut and, and doing less and, and waiting and being patient. Now, as we consider that, we're going to go in and, and see that in our marriages and with love and respect, we are not on our own. And we also want to tap in to the power that God shows us and the love that he shows us in Jesus Christ. So let's start by looking. We're, we're, we're going to be looking at Ephesians chapter 5 that talk about love and respect. But where we're going to start is Ephesians 4, the chapter before. And, and it tells us about the mindset we need to have when we start. It says, you were taught with regard to your former way of life to put off your old self, which is being corrupted by its deceitful desires, to be made new in the attitude of your minds, and to put on the new self, created to be like God in true righteousness and holiness. This is actually a continuation from Jeff's message from last week. If you remember, last week is when he said, we have to look out for hard hearts. It's because our hearts were hard that, that a lot of these things and problems in marriage happen. And that is what this is pointing to, the old self, that being selfish and self-centered as opposed to putting on the new self, which is modeled to be like Christ. In the blank, you can write, love and respect come from soft hearts. They come from soft hearts. And as you're considering this idea of having a soft heart, I'm going to assume that you want to have a soft heart and that you're coming here truly caring about your relationship, wanting to follow God and his word. But one of the things you need to understand with your heart is your heart is a lot like Play-Doh. Now, when I was a kid, and in, well, I like Play-Doh a little bit now too, but anyways, when I played with it and I had my little can of Play-Doh, that... On a day that I would play with it, the first thing that you need to do with the Play-Doh is you need to work it, right? And, and so you work it, and the more you work it, it, it starts to be moldable. And then when you're done with the Play-Doh, you put it back and you put the cover on. But if you go back to play with it the next day, it, it kind of gets hard again. So you need to, again, go in and work the Play-Doh to make sure it's moldable. And you need to understand that your heart, my heart, a heart that is tainted by sin has hardening agents in it. And, and so what happens is that as, as that sin inside of us continues to try to make it be hard again. And so on a daily basis, when we start our day, when I start my day, the way that I try to soften my heart is by confessing my sin. When I confess, Lord, please forgive me in the areas where I have failed as a husband, as a father, as a pastor, as a friend. And, and some of those I know what I've done wrong, and others I don't. I don't even realize what I've done. But I start by softening my heart and, and then going to Christ's love and understanding that Jesus has forgiven me. That is where we need to start, and I encourage you to start on a daily basis in your relationship with your Lord. If you want to help your marriage, if you want to help any relationship you have, it starts with your relationship with Christ. We continue. Matthew 19, verse 4. Haven't you read, he replied, that at the beginning the Creator made them male and female? This is another very important part of the message of, of love and respect is to understand that men and women are different. Male and female are different. We understand that in a physical way, 
but it's also true in, in an emotional and, and mental way that, that they're, they're different, that I'm different from my wife, and, and she's different from me. And that's okay. That's the way God made us on purpose. And so in the blank you can write, God has given us gender as a gift for men and women to complement one another, not compete. Complement one another. Now, this compliment isn't saying, hey, you're awesome, baby, and her saying, you know what, you're not so bad yourself. That's a compliment. But, but what we're talking about here is compliment, meaning complete. You, you complete one another that you are for your spouse what, or, or someone else in a relationship what, what you are not. And one way that my wife and I have really experienced this this month was going back to Wisconsin for 10 days. I don't need to get into it, but we still own our home back there because we couldn't sell it when we moved down here, so we rented it. It kind of got beat up. We needed to sell it. Um, it got beat up, so we needed to go back and fix it. For And we took 10 days to do that. And as we were on the plane flying there to fix it, we realized, we looked at each other, and, and, and my wife said, do you think we're going to kill each other after these 10 days? <laughs> because we, my wife and I, are very different. Uh, but what happened during those 10 days was, one of the things was the outside of the house. We, we pressure washed it and got it scrubbed down. And my wife said, you know what, I think we need to paint it. And I said, I don't think we need to paint it. I think it looks fine because I hate painting. I hate painting. And she said, you know what? I'll paint it. To which I said, I think it would look nice painted. I think that's a great idea. Well, in the meantime, a bathroom needed to be completely torn out and uh, the drywall fixed and put back together. A shed in back was falling apart. And what I found is that if the job included power tools, I was up for it. That, it, that seemed a, a, a fun to me. And so what happened on a daily basis as we, we worked together, working on this house, and finally when we got done 10 days later, and praise the Lord, we got done 10 days later, three days later, had an offer, four days later, had an accepted full offer on the property because we worked together, and by the time we got done, a part of us said, you know what? This looks better than when we lived here. I Man, it wouldn't be bad to stay here. But, but what happened is we experienced the joy of complimenting one another. And, and when we, we thought about it, we said, you know what? We should make an HGTV program, love him or, or, love him or leave it, and it would be 10 days where a couple works together on a house to, to rediscover the blessing that they are to each other. Because the reality of it is, is on a daily basis, I look at her differences and they frustrate me. And I think I frustrate her as well. And, and so as we look at love and respect, this is about enjoying that complementary relationship on a regular basis. We continue. If only it was great like that all the time, but James 4, 1 to 2. And this isn't just talking, this verse isn't just talking about marriage, it's all relationships. What causes fights and quarrels among you? Don't they come from desires that battle within you? You desire but do not have, so you kill. You covet, but you cannot get what you want, so you quarrel and fight. You do not have because you do not ask God. Think about this for a moment. What is it? To answer the question, what is it that, quarrel, that causes quarrels among you, that causes arguments? And as we, we considered this, and, and, and my wife and I kind of talked this through a little bit, we realized that we really talk and argue about some stupid stuff. Some, some, some really crazy things about where the remote is left. Uh, what time we eat supper, what we're going to have. I mean, so, some of the things that we look back and we, we're like, really? So, so why does this happen? It, it happens because we're not getting something that we want. In the blank, you can write, another name for a house of cards is the crazy cycle. You're going to want to remember that from today, the crazy cycle. It comes from trying to get blessings 
the wrong way. It comes from trying to get blessings the wrong way. Now, I have a little visual of the crazy cycle. This is what, it, what happens, in essence, is that there's not love and respect in a marriage. And, and so what happens is, when I feel my wife treats me without respect, then I treat her without love. And when I treat her without love, she disrespects me even more, which, which makes me then act in an unloving way towards her. And it's a vicious merry-go-round. It, it's a cycle. And the way that you can identify the crazy cycle in your relationships is if you sit there after an argument with your spouse and, and say to yourself, I've had this fight before. I mean, it's like the same thing, different day. Are you kidding me? And, and we end up in the same place. And so I, I wrote down some of the topics that, that sometimes get involved in the crazy cycle. Money, sex, kids, and priorities, and also how you spend your time. Money. It, would, it was crazy how crazy, imagine that, the crazy psych was crazy, that it would happen on days when the credit card bill came. And what would happen is, like, I, they, I never check the mail, but when the credit card statement comes, I always do. And, and so I get there and I, I look at the credit card statement, I'm like, what in the heck are you spending money on? Are you kidding me? Did we not agree that, uh, th that we're not going to charge anything? We're doing the Dave Ramsey thing? We, why are you doing this? Well, you know what? I just, all of that was at Walmart, and I needed to just get stuff to, to keep the house going. If you knew how much all of these things cost... Well, I told you, we agreed, you were not going to do this. And so now I start acting in anger towards her in an unloving way. And this doesn't happen necessarily to us, but it could. Well, you know what? If you made more money, this wouldn't be an issue. Because if you were making enough money, I'm telling you, there, there's this one guy that I used to date, and I know how much money he makes now, <laughs> that he would be happy if his wife only spent this much per month on stuff in the house. Well, you know what? Maybe we should get his number. And maybe we should call him. Yeah, it's funny now, but in the argument, it's not. And, and so, my point is this. That we need to understand that we are going about this the wrong way. And, and, and I'm going to guess, when you look at the, the things in your crazy cycle, maybe when you're removed from them, they're kind of funny. But when you're in them, they are hurtful, and you want it to stop. We continue. And I'm, t I'm warning you right now, these words, for, for if you're in the crazy cycle, these are words you do not want to hear. Submit to one another out of reverence for Christ. Wives, submit, to your hus you, submit yourselves to your own husbands as you do to the Lord. Husbands, love your wives just as Christ loved the church and gave himself up for her to make her holy, cleansing her by the washing with water through the word. Are you kidding me? You're telling me to submit myself to him after the way that he treats me? Are you kidding me? You're telling me, Lord, now to, to love her after the way that she talks to me? I, I don't even want to be around her. But before we, we take this in a very personal way, I want you to take a step back just for a moment. Because love and respect, the one thing we need to understand is this is not just in marriages. Th these are foundational things for the church. Notice, I, and I chose specifically the verse before, submit to one another out of reverence for Christ. This idea of submission. Submit means to fall in line behind someone, and it's a military term. So, so if you tell a group of people to fall in, what happens is people go to boot camp willingly to learn this. And the reason why they do that is they fall in and they learn to march in order with one person's direction so that a group of people can now move as one. And, and that person is then subject to another person. And, and finally, it allows for an army to, to move together as one and to fight as one. As we look at this, we understand that the Bible describes how we are together. 
whether it calls us the, the bride of Christ or, or whether we are the building of the church, the reality of it is, is that God wants us to be one. And the way that we do that is, is by falling in behind Christ because we trust him and we respect him. We do the same thing in, in, a, in a church where we have a board of directors and, and Jeff as our administrative pastor that I fall in behind them, that we fall in behind them, that as they set a vision that is set for them by Christ and his word, that we fall in behind them so that we can operate as one for the gospel of Jesus Christ, so that we can teach people in our congregation as effectively as possible, that we can reach out as effectively as possible, that we can function with fellowship and with groups and with worship, all of the things that we do that we can do them together as one. That's that submission, that's that respect. And then also, obviously, the love part, this is how people will know that you are my disciples, if you love one another. And now what Jesus is telling us, and, and Paul is telling us in, in these words, is that in a marriage, that if you want to move about as one, where two become one, there needs to be falling in behind and there also needs to be love, loving like Christ loved the church and respecting as we respect Christ. In the blank, you can write, there is only one person I can control in my marriage or other relationship and it is me. This is another interesting part. It doesn't say wives your husbands are supposed to love you, so get after them until they do. And it doesn't say, husbands, your wives are supposed to, to submit to you and to respect you, so pound down on them until you get the respect you need. No, each one of these, notice that, that you are encouraged in your own role to do what God has called you to do. And I'm just going to tell you, now, now I know what's going through your minds because I know what, what I've heard this enough times and I've felt and thought it myself. But what if he doesn't follow through? And, and what if she doesn't do what, what she's supposed to do? Or, in my own case, I've tried this. I'm telling you, I did this for like three days and there was absolutely no change in her attitude towards me. I'm telling you, it's the way that I've felt. But now what I need you to think about when you think of, of love and respect to, is to understand, and this is a very important part, you can't make someone love you and you can't make someone respect you. You can't. It's not something that is within your power to make them do. And if you, you doubt that, just look at our relationship with Christ. As a pastor, sometimes I wish Jesus would just drop the hammer already. That if you want people to follow you, Jesus, come on every once in a while. Just do, do something mighty and strong and, and show them who's boss. And, and they'll come in fear and not in love, without respect, without proper fear and then they'll be gone. Once their fear is gone, they will be gone as well. So instead, Jesus came into this world. And for, think about this, for three years, as he showed love, ministering, teaching, showing people the path to heaven through his word, going to the cross, dying on the cross, and, and when he did that, you could argue that Jesus failed. You could say, Jesus, you failed. Your love failed. But we know that he rose from the dead and he ascended into heaven. And we also know that 2,000 years later, we are here celebrating his love and we're not here with a gun to our head. No one is forcing us to submit to Christ, but we do so willingly because Jesus modeled what it is to show love and trusted that love through the work of the Holy Spirit, through that gospel message to change people's hearts. And those are relationships that last an eternity. 
And so this, this section is not so much about trusting your spouse to respond in the way that you want to, but trusting Christ and his promises and that as you are the things that he has called you to be, to stop wasting your time on the crazy cycle, at times to maybe keep your mouth shut to say and do nothing and to trust him to do what he promises. Let's look at a full, the full words of this. Turn the page to Ephesians chapter 5. Submit to one another out of reverence for Christ. Wives, submit yourselves to your own husbands as you do to the Lord. For the husband is the head of the wife as Christ is the head of the church, his body of which he is the Savior. Now as the church submits to Christ, he, he also, so, excuse me, so also wives should submit to their husbands in everything. And then it goes on. Husbands, love your wives just as Christ loved the church and gave himself up for her to make her holy, cleansing her by the washing with water through the word and to present her to himself as a radiant church without stain or wrinkle or any other blemish, but holy and blameless. In this same way, husbands ought to love their wives as their own bodies. He who loves his wife loves himself. Guys, look at those words one more time. He who loves his wife loves himself. When the two become one in a marriage, when, when there is this love and there is this respect for each other, the two are one. In the blank, you can write, the roles God gives help men and women to give what the other person needs. We give selflessly, we give selflessly and hopefully. And what I mean by that, selflessly and hopefully, is selflessly, we look at the love that Christ gave and he expected nothing in return. But he was hopeful that something would come in return, which is a relationship with us that we would see his love and respond to it. And so in our relationships, I understand that, that as we look at the, this love and respect that we give selflessly, not manipulatively, not, you know what, I've done this and this and this now, and you haven't had any reaction yet, and you are not doing what I want you to do. That's manipulation. But selflessly is, is when we say, you know what, as we do this, I expect nothing in return. I am doing this and I am fueled by this by my relationship with Jesus Christ and his love for me. That is why I am doing what I am doing. And I am at the same time hopeful that through my showing of love, that through my giving of respect to my husband, that our, our marriage relationship will begin to, to mend and to begin to heal. And that the same relationship I enjoy with Christ as I trust him and follow him and he loves me, that on a different level I will enjoy that same type of close relationship, a trust relationship with my spouse. Complementary relationship. Completing one another. Living what God wants you to be for each other. We go to the final one. And, and this is where really some practical, if you want practical application, this is it. This is a profound mystery. This stuff, it's hard to figure out, okay? It's a mis mystery, meaning it's hard to come up with this, and, and definitely the, the gospel of Jesus Christ, you don't come up with it by yourself. You don't come up with this idea, yeah, maybe Jesus should come die for our sin. No, it's a mystery. Unless God reveals it to you, you will not find it out. This is a profound mystery, but I am talking about Christ and the church. But also in relationships, it can be a mystery. It can be hard to understand. However, each one of you also must love his wife as he loves himself, and the wife must respect her husband. We are going into the, the final thing that I, that I would like to do today is as we look at this message, approaching with soft hearts, wanting, Lord, help us in our, in our relationship for our, our relationship to heal and mend. 
What I'm going to do now is give practical examples of ways to show love and respect to your spouse. It's from a book called Love and Respect, and I'm going to give just some suggestions. Now, as we do this, what's interesting about the, this book is they say that 80% of men, when asked, would you rather have love or respect in your marriage? 80% of men said, I would rather have respect than love. And now women here are like, oh my goodness, how could you say that? Well, this is what, when asked about uh, respect, this is what they meant. That I, would rather, that I would rather have my wife like me, not nag me, and be civil to me on a daily basis. 80% of women said, I would rather have love than respect in my marriage. And for that reason, there are times when maybe you see this, maybe you're part of this, when women put up with an incredible amount of abuse and then will say, yeah, but I believe he loves me. And, and, and for them, they would say, you know what, that's enough. Well, that tells me 20% of you from each side are saying, that's a bunch of garbage. I disagree with that. That's all right. You, you can do that. I'm, I'm not saying we all fit into every one of these categories, but what I am going to tell you is as we look at these things, here's what I want you to do. I want you to think to yourself, what is one thing here that you crave in a relationship? And this might be a relationship at work. This can be a marriage relationship, whatever it is. But most of these, as we look at House of Cards, is in a family relationship. I want you to think of one of these that you desperately crave and then one of these that you believe that someone you are in a relationship with, whether it be a, a parent or a spouse or whoever it happens to be, one thing you believe that they crave that you would like to feed, that you would like to give to them. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna have you write these down quick and then I'm going quickly and then I'm going to explain them. So for her, ways that a, a woman feels loved. Closeness, openness, understanding, peacemaking, loyalty, esteem. I know you're feverishly writing. Uh, Joda's not going to take it down for a while, so relax. We're all good. We'll get it. I promise you, you'll get these written down. Closeness, openness, understanding, peacemaking, loyalty, and esteem. And then for him, conquest, Hierarchy, authority, insight, relationship, and sexuality. Hopefully you got them down and I'm not in your way. Conquest, hierarchy, authority, insight, relationship, sexuality. And leave those up for a little bit. Now, what I'd like to do just for a moment is explain what I mean by each one of these. So the first one for her, and this is for someone who is craving love. First of all, closeness. They're all a little different because everyone has a little bit different love language, but the closeness piece of this would be, I'd like to, maybe to hold hands or snuggle or let's go for a walk together or, or spend time with one another. That would be the closeness, just wanting to be, I like it when you're around. Now the crazy cycle part of this is when the husband is working 60 hours a week to provide for the family and, and the wife is saying, I would rather be poor and have you around than rich and not have you here. And, I'm, and, and so you need to understand this because this is going to be connected with the conquest hierarchy where, where a man has a desire to provide for his home and his family. And if I have to put in all these hours to do it, I'm happy to do it because this makes me feel fulfilled by bringing in money. The next one, openness. Hey, honey, what are you thinking about right now? Can you share with me? I'm thinking about the football game. That's what I'm watching. That's what I'm thinking about. I'm thinking about why you won't leave me alone when I'm trying to. How many times my wife has, something has happened at Crosswalker, even in my family, 
and it'll be so-and-so is pregnant. I'm like, yeah, I knew that like three weeks ago. And you didn't tell me? I didn't consciously not tell you. I just didn't. And she's like, it craves that openness. We need to talk. The next one, understanding. Another one, this is, I'm horrible at. Dan, will you just listen? Don't try to fix it. Will you just listen to what I'm saying and say nothing other than I love you and maybe hug me when I'm done? What good does that do? It, it shows her and reminds her she's loved. The next one, peacemaking. Peacemaking is that when there's an issue that I don't run away and leave because I don't even want to deal with it and fight with it. But there are times when I say, maybe you were right. Not I was wrong, but maybe you were right. That's all you get today. But the ability to say you're wrong when you are and how much that means because you trust her not to use that and pile on you, but you had make that. You can truly make peace. The next one, loyalty. Especially as our kids get older and there can be disagreements, if I go in on the side of the kids against her and she feels teamed up on, she hates that. Or even worse, if it's my mom. And, and I'm like, yeah, I think my mom's right, honey. Uh, it, that it's not about who's right even. It's about me being there and standing her and being loyal to her. And then also esteem. You know what, honey? We're going to be married 25 years. I'd do it again in a heartbeat because I love and care about you. That's, that's esteem. And these are part of love. Now, for guys, the conquest, there's a reason why we have man caves. And that's to show our conquest. There's a reason why guys like to kill animals and then stuff them and hang them on their walls. For some of you, it might be like, that's gross, that's horrible. Other guys are like, yeah. I mean, why would you not want to do that? Conquest. It, it shows a victory that I have. The next one is hierarchy. The worst way that I see this abused is if there is a wife who reminds her husband all the time that she makes more than he does. That, that, that some, it just, it like is a thing of saying, I'm better than you because that's the measure we use. Or just as bad with hierarchy is, is if you're in a situation where you have someone who comes over and helps with something, a handyman at the house. Well, it's so great you're able to do this. My husband can't do anything like this. He's like incompetent. <laughs> that, that's respect. And for ladies, if you don't think that's a big deal, imagine if I were to say, you're a great mother. My, my wife is horrible. I mean, she can't take care of the kids or anything. Her meals are, pff, are you kidding me? I wish we had someone like you at home uh, to take care of us. You'd say that's unloving. And, 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 and just to consider these things. Next one is insight, to appreciate his, his, what your husband has to say as he leads the family. Uh, the, the relationship. Notice, relationship, you would say this should be okay if, if she wants understanding and relationship. But guys' relationship is different. They're shoulder-to-shoulder -shoulder relationships, which means, honey, I'm willing to go fishing with you, but please don't talk in the boat. And, and, and that's the guy thing is that we're together, that guys can do that. I go fishing with my friends and no one talks. And, and, and it's like, that was a great day. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm like joking about this, but it's true. These are the things that you say, how can you crave this? That makes no sense to me. But for some of you, you're like saying, that's what I've been asking for for years. <laughs> and then finally is the, is the sexuality part. And, and a desire to... Uh, for your spouse to desire you, that, that you truly want me, that you, you want to be close to me and, and to be intimate with me. And, and all of these things together. Now, I've joked about some of them, and, but I ask you to really consider right now, which are the ones for you that I have to imagine that at some point there's something that you recognized as as hurtful or, or an area where you could really use that, that encouragement. And then also to think, you know what, what is one that I can give for my wife that she has been asking for? And, and one that in a small way that I can remind her that I love her. Because then what happens is not the crazy cycle, but rather it's the energizing cycle. Where as I show love to her, it increases her respect and her trust in me. 
And, and as she does that, that leads me to be even more loving to her. And now what you have is, instead of the crazy cycle, the, the merry-go-round turns. And, and it goes and, and it builds on itself in a relationship with, with love and respect. It, they're kind of like those pedals on a bike. They continue to go faster and faster in a relationship. I started with, we don't need to work harder, we need to work smarter. And, and so I want to go back to, to people who are here today who are hurting, people who are like tired, who are, who are like my roommate, who are like, had enough. And, and maybe in some ways, I, you know, I can see their point, I can see your point as well. But my encouragement to you is to go back to love and respect two wonderful gifts that God has given his church. The love that he has shown in Jesus Christ, that is not only motivation, but that is strength to move forward. And now look for opportunities in your relationship. Instead of giving your spouse maybe something you want, give them something that they crave. Listen to them. Spend time and give these gifts of love and respect that God has given to his church. Let's pray. Dear Lord God, we thank you for the relationship we have with Jesus Christ and that we are the bride of Christ. Thank you for showing love to us and help us to show respect for you as we fall in behind you, uh, trusting you completely. Lord, we also ask that you be with people who are here today, relationships that are in the crazy cycle, that just continue to, to go uh, back and forth looking and craving for and desiring love and respect. Please help all of our people here today in whatever relationships they are in, but especially in marriage relationships, uh, to, to, to model your love that you have shown in the church and, and also for us to model the, the love and respect that we have for you in our relationships as well. Please be with us and, and give us the strength to keep moving forward. And it's in Jesus' name we pray, amen.